Heather from Hooked on Pickin' here. I am here to talk about seven tips, or rather they're more like questions, to buying wholesale and maximizing profits. So we're gonna talk about all of those things, but first we kind of teased you in the last video that we did, and if you haven't seen that, it'll be tagged at the end of this video. What is our gift shop experience? Have you ever been on vacation, walked into a gift shop, and then loved browsing? Well, Paul has a story about a gift shop that I want to share. Hey, we were taking a little walk in our back property here. So this little hidden cove in the trees, really pretty this time of year, but it reminds me a lot of going to Branson, Missouri. And we like to go there with our church and see lots of different shows. And uh, each of the shows that we go to at the very end of it has a gift shop and these gift shops have always been kind of intriguing to me. All the different little uh, items that they have, sometimes they're themed in their shows and sometimes they're not. One of the spots that we stopped at was the aquarium in Branson and it was really awesome. And when we got to the very end of the aquarium, of course they had the gift shop. And as we go to that gift shop, I start seeing all of the families in our, in our church uh, going around picking up little items. And I start noticing that probably 90% of the items that I saw there I know where they get it. They get it through wholesale. And I actually know exactly some of the manufacturers that they come from. I know the prices that, well, th those items are that I could buy on wholesale. And well, it almost made me upset thinking through that. But I also looked at all of the families and they were enjoying the experience. They had just seen the aquarium and they loved it. And now they were buying that little plush octopus. That little plush octopus I can buy for $2.99. They were buying it for $14.99. Now, I guess memory has something to do with it, right? That it was from the Branson uh, Aquarium, although it really isn't from the Branson Aquarium. It's from the wholesaler. That got me thinking a lot. And I went through a few of the other gift shops that were around. They had, uh, oh, I think it was a diner that we stopped at and all these little shops. And as we went in, Heather and I were having a good time looking at stuff. We noticed that when we saw the item, like, I know where they're getting this at. And we would turn the item on the back to look at the price. And again, four times, five times the markup. And still, I thought, man, somebody is making money. I wonder if we could do something similar to this, but not do the four to five times the markup. And so we want to go through some of the tips of how we uh, buy wholesale and that maybe it's something that you could do also. And if you will, there's seven questions to maximize your profits, not necessarily to rip people off at the, the process, but seven tips to be able to help you maximize your profits as you're buying wholesale. Hey, we're at the computer now. We're gonna actually show you those seven tips or rather questions to buying wholesale and maximizing profits. Paul's gonna kind of take the reins here because he's got them all kind of written out and he's gonna show you on the Tundra website how exactly we're gonna maximize those profits. Very good. I hope you enjoyed our backyard little tour there too. That was kind of fun to be able to do. So Heather's directing here. So that's kind gift of fun. Stores. G <laughs> gift stores here. So. You know, uh, like we were saying, almost every gift shop has this, uh, all kinds of things. Where are they getting all this stuff? They're getting it from wholesale. So what I want to do is I want to show you the Tundra Wholesale, but I also want to go through the seven different questions I try to ask myself before I purchase the item, okay? And I I almost, I half the time I don't even ask them, I just know it now, but it should be able to help you to be able to maximize your profits. What you want uh, to the best of your ability is not to make a bad purchase. Now, some of that's out of your control. You just don't know half the time what the customer is going to uh, what's going to buy. You know, like the person that made the fidget spinner. You know, I'm sure they eventually put them on wholesale, and they probably went like crazy, and somebody made a million dollars off of it. But you just never know. So these are questions that I try to ask myself, and I've. I've read a lot on it, so people also ask themselves the questions to be able to help them. The very first question you ask yourself when you're trying to buy wholesale is, are you willing to try it? Okay, are you just willing to try new products? So when you hop on wholesale, you see all the different categories, and then you just say, okay, I'm just going to shop as that store owner and look around to see, is there something here that I want to just try? Like, 
go to sports and outdoors. And you start going down through this and you go, what about this? What about this uh, canteen? What is this? Americana flag canvas canteen. Okay. So you click on it, you check it out there. It's kind of unique, I would have to Got say. Got a carabiner, so you yeah. can clip it on a backpack or something. I have no clue if somebody is going to want that or not, but you already might have your wheels to turn into thinking about that. Well, you see that, uh, well, what do they need for it? Uh, six items. You have to buy six in a case. They're nine fifty a piece, so it's $57 for the case. They're saying you could buy it at nine fifty and sell for $21. You might be able to get that. Maybe that's something that would go better at the 4th of July, or maybe this is the perfect time to do it because it's Christmas and people are trying to think of that, I don't know, that, that unique gift unique gift that you give to uncle or aunt and you have no clue what to get mm -hmm. them, right? Uh, let's go back and see something else here. Why don't we go to um, uh, home, okay? You look through home and you go, hey, look at this, um, I don't know. Uh, I like that. A little. I like the burrito blanket. The burrito blanket. There you go. A burrito blanket. Everybody needs a burrito blanket in their life. That might be the perfect gift to give somebody for Christmas. <laughs> and here you're buying a box of burrito blankets. Well, I mean, you get uh, each box contains twenty. Uh, tw go, twenty in a box. Go to the next. Go to the next <laughs> picture. I want to see what they look like. The next picture. There you go. It's a burrito blanket. Just wrap yourself in a burrito. Just wrap yourself in a burrito. Everybody needs one of those. <laughs> now, if you think about it like the gift shop mentality, what if you have a mom and pop taco stand? That is something that not only are you selling tacos, now you're selling a burrito blanket also. Um, you know, and, and that might be some kind of little thing that you buy as a humorous whatnot uh, mm -hmm. when you go in there. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. What's something else that we could do? Uh, you could go fashion. There's always all kinds of stuff for fashion. Oh, Route 66. That's interesting because yep. we live really close to Route 66. We live very close to Route 66. Maybe there are T-shirts that you can grab a hold of. That. Maybe you live right off of or your store is right off of 66. And you think this could be a great shirt. And you could get it all various different sizes as you see. This to me might be a little pricey for a shirt, $14 for wholesale. I don't wholesale. know, if you had a boutique in a cute little town, you might be able to get. Could you sell for 26 Some of you are going, absolutely, I could sell that for $26. And boom, that's what it would look like right there. And there you go. So who knows? Maybe it's something that you could try. I, are you willing to try it? Wholesale gives you the opportunity, if you will, to try different things. And that's what I've been using it for. And it's really fun to be able to do that. Now. Uh, when I try it, I try it in small quantities. I don't buy if that Route 66 t-shirt, I don't buy 700 of those shirts. I, th to me, that would be utterly ridiculous. I have no clue if they're going to sell. But I might buy one of each size and put it out there. Those burrito blankets, I might buy 10 if I had that taco stand. And I thought, hey, let's see what people think about these, right? You try little samples, and if all of a sudden the first day all 10 of them sell, you know, boom, I'm ordering 20, I'm ordering 40, I'm ordering whatever it is extra uh, on top of that. So try small orders. Most of the time when you try small orders, around $150 or so is about a small order on Tundra, and it goes pretty well when you do that uh, for shipping and whatnot. The second uh, tip to buying wholesale, I would say, is do they offer free shipping? Now, like we talked about in our last video, I am a pro member on Tundra, which means I get free shipping. And you can already see right here how much I've saved on free shipping just this month, uh, $400. It would have cost me $400 to sh uh, for the shipping, but uh, it, it didn't. But there's a way to get around that. Before you go too far, I do want to let you guys know that if you're not familiar with Tundra or you've never ordered on Tundra, we're actually offering a um, a buyer referral link. So um, you will get 15% off. You click the link down in the description below. Um, so just go ahead and click that link and you, it'll take you right to Tundra. And in the first 30 days, you'll be able to get 15% off your first 
uh, expenditure of $300. So you can get up to $300 um, of product and get that 15% off. So I would definitely say go ahead and check that out. Um, basically, it's just because we're already a customer, we're able to offer that 15% off to people who have never been a customer before. So check out Tundra. In that first 30 days, you can get that 15% off. So I did want to offer that to you um, but since we're talking about saving money on free shipping. Yeah, um, and I think Tundra just started doing that not too long ago. And actually, like I said in the last video, we just noticed that. So anytime that any uh, person that we buy from starts offering discount codes or referral codes, we try to do that as quickly as possible. We definitely want to pass it along to you. Right. Guys. So if you can save some money, great. Uh, go for it. Uh, let's see here. There's another way around the free shipping if you're not a, a, a pro member or not. And, and I don't pay a subscription. It's just I purchase over $500 a month. And so they give you a perk for that. But um, uh, another way to do it is each of the particular stores that you go on to. Like if I go to home and I go to this uh, basket here. Uh, then I go to uh, Sun Sum Intentional Living. Uh, this one says, well, it's kind of hard for me to show it because it says I'm uh, free shipping. What it will do is as you're building your cart, it will give you a threshold. So if you spend over $200, they'll automatically give you free shipping or something like that. So that might be something for you to consider too. Um, because free shipping, if you will, it's kind of like the hidden cost. It's, it's kind of uh, like on hookedonpicking.com. If yep. you order $100 off hookedonpicking.com exactly. and you live in the United States, you get free shipping. And so it's the same thing with a lot of the Tundra stores is you hit a certain threshold and you automatically get free shipping. I think Walmart, if you order off walmart.com, you spend more than $35, you get free shipping. And so lots of different websites do that. Right. It, when you're buying wholesale and even when you're buying liquidation, shipping is a big deal. You need to really look at it. Because that needs to be lumped into your cost of goods. So if you think you're buying something for $5 and you don't get free shipping, you're not buying it for $5. You could be buying it as, as much as $7. You know, And that really changes your view. There have been times I don't purchase things because I don't get free shipping. I just feel like that's just a little too steep for me at that different time. And sometimes when you're buying from California or wherever you're buying, it can be... Uh, expensive. Uh, California is expensive for us because we're in the Midwest. Also, just so you know, um, we did offer the Tundra a 15% off code. Oh, yeah. But I wanted to mention that we're also offering, because of your, you watching this video, and it's kind of just a how-to video, not a regular unboxing video, uh, use the promo code VIDEO. Use the promo code VIDEO on hookedonpicking.com, and you can get 15% off as well. Since Tundra's doing 15% off, we thought, well, we're just going to go ahead yep. and do 15% off on hookedonpicking.com. So that can be used at any time. If you watch this video, you can use the promo code VIDEO uh, and get 15% off right now at hookedonpicking.com. Right. That's uh, our shameless plug. We're definitely trying desperately to sell as much as we possibly can. Well, listen, I want to sell a bunch of stuff because I like to buy a bunch of stuff. So really, right. it's supporting my shopaholic behavior. No, that's not it at all. <laughs> I really, we, have well, a, we have a child we want to get to college. So so buy as much as possible. Fund our child's college fund. Yes. Okay, uh, seven tips. Uh, first tip, are you willing to try it? That's a big thing because some people, they just won't. You yeah. just won't even try it. I'd say give it a shot. Spend one hundred and fifty dollars and see what happens. Well, and Tundra's nice because you're not spending like most wholesalers. You have to spend thousands of dollars, and this you can spend hundreds of dollars. Correct. Um, second, do they offer free shipping? That's a big question. Something you need to consider because that's a part of cost of goods. And number three, are the items in season or out of season? Now that's the nice thing about buying wholesale. When you buy liquidation, you're buying the pallet. You're going to get some Christmas, some Easter, some Valentine's, and oh well. And it's usually months after that holiday. Yep. So it's usually out of season. And oh, quite often that stuff will still sell just slower when it's not in season. Wholesale is different though. If it's after Christmas, don't buy it, right? But man, if it's time for Christmas, you can do something like this. Go to Staples for a holiday display. Look at this. You can get ornaments. If you're in Alabama, just an ornament that says home. Um, a solo cup, all kinds of different little things here. Uh, the silver heart ornament set that could probably go for Valentine's Day or uh, it could go for Christmas. And then everybody needs a Bob Marley ornament. 
I mean, boom, yeah. right there, a Bob Marley ornament. Who would have ever thought you could buy a Bob Marley ornament? Just but you don't can. go shoot the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff. But here's another thing, okay? Um, not to scare anybody, but look, here's a scary hanging skeleton. But see, now's not the time to buy the scary hanging skeleton because it's right after Halloween. Mm -hmm. Unless you know of some place that you can move it at, now's probably not the time. But all the Christmas stuff, now that could be perfect. Merry Christmas, everyone, it's right? It's a little ornament. Uh, retro ornament? Is that a card or what is that? Yeah, it's Christmas cards, okay? Cool. Uh, they're, they're, they're Christmas cards. So, boom. Uh, th this is the perfect time. Now, if it's New Year's, it's probably hard to move the Christmas cards, sure. right? So, uh, is it in season? The other kind of question that goes along with that is, is it in style? And so, mm -hmm. if I go back to fashion, my problem is I've never been in style. I have no clue what style no, is. No, the thing is, you're always in style. I am That's not. That's what it is. I'm not. But the thing that might be in style is to decorate your beard. I feel like your brother would do that. I don't know <laughs> if that's in style. <laughs> Paul's brother would totally decorate his beard. I could, bearded people probably would decorate their beards. Now look at that. It's a whole beard decorating Clip, kit. Clip set. I want to buy this right it's now. It's called Beardaments. Beardaments. Look at this. I feel like we need to buy that. That is awesome. Wait, do they light up? Yes, they light up. <laughs> that's amazing. Very important. Now look, uh, seven forty nine is what they cost. You get five, five boxes. But it's the probably whole set. It. Yeah. Yep. Thirty seven forty five. Could you sell it for fifteen dollars? I could see somebody easily buying that for fifteen. We need some beardaments. We need beardaments. I should probably bookmark this. But moving on, because that's not the real point of why we're doing what we're doing today. <laughs> See, we can't help it. We still want to shop. <laughs> so are the items in season or out of season? I think you kind of get where I'm going. Are they in style or out of style? Uh, in liquidation, you just buy the whole bunch, and you have to kind of deal with it and walk through it. On, on wholesale, you don't. Uh, you can pick and choose what you really want to set up for. Number four, question to ask yourself. Have you considered where you're going to store the item? That's huge. Or you'll end up buying three pallets of shoes and not know what to do with it. Who, who would do that? Who would? What kind of lunatic know, buys would, three pallets of who, shoes? Who, 800 pairs of shoes. Who has done that? Go to hookedonpicking.com. Um, use the promo code video. Buy yeah, yourself some shoes. Please buy shoes, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, as an example of items that... Um, was it home? I found it. Oh, no, in, no, no, no. You typed in Okay, furniture. another thing you can do up on, on Tundra is just type in uh, furniture. Yep. Uh, it's probably spelled wrong. There you go. Oh, that'll work. Okay, uh, you can buy large things wholesale. You really can. Um, let me get something fairly large like this. Okay, uh, you could buy this bookcase. It's actually kind of a cool looking bookcase. You could buy it. Each of those bookcases is going to cost $80.50. So, it's, you know, that's probably decent. I don't know. I haven't price checked bookcases and not everything. But when you look at that, you're going to need some space to store that particular item. Now, I know it's not going to come assembled and all that, but, but it's still a bigger item than some of the other little, small little trinkets. As you can go to this person's site, you can look. These are fairly larger items. So you have to think, do I have enough space to store some of these things? But if you do, if you're sitting on a warehouse where you've got, I've got all the space in the world, um, these might be beautiful things. Have somebody maybe build some for you, set them up uh, on display for you. Look, they're in stock. You know what's going on in our country today with things. Uh, supply and uh, demand. Supply and demand. Here you go. Boom. You could open up a little furniture shop in your own little town and uh, be well, ready to go. The other thing, too, is now instead of selling 15 of an item and making a big chunk of money, you're yeah. selling one large piece yeah. and you're making 100 bucks. You know, yep. um, and so that's another option as well. If you have the space, definitely selling something more expensive, you're going to get more bang for your buck. Right. But you do have to store it. You do have to find a way to display it. And this is generally a piece that probably you wouldn't want to ship because of fear of it being broken and it being a high dollar price. Uh, it's probably something you want to sell in a retail space. Right. Most likely that's the way you want to do it, I think. I'm sure you can still ship it. You can sure. ship anything. It's just going to add to the cost, of mm -hmm. course, when you do that there. The neat thing for us was, um, you know, just being a pro member, I can get it for free shipping. It's $170. What do you think you could sell that for? Sure. 
They're saying three thirty nine. I think we could sell for two hundred fifty dollars probably oh, yeah. all day long. But mm -hmm. you don't know. You don't know until you try there. But it's a good question to ask yourself. Have you considered where you're going to store the item? That's a big deal. Well, and I think in the last item, you, uh, last video, you were talking about storing food, and one of the food items had to be refrigerated. Uh, and that adds right on to the fifth question. Oh, uh, <laughs> you still my questions. Stealing my questions. Uh, number five is: Do the products have a good shelf life? Would you like to talk about that one, Heather? Well, <laughs> food has expiration dates, <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> Uh, all food has expiration dates. Let me show you a particular one here. If I go to the Little Red Kitchen Bake Shop, okay? I am actually just made an order for their cookies. I think that they could maybe go kind of a neat little thing for around for Christmas. But when you go to their caramel apple oatmeal cookies, okay, you go to them. I think if you go down, look at the shelf life under product description, shelf life, four weeks. Oh, wow, that's short. Four weeks. That is a short. They're trying to, the, their big deal is it's like it's homemade, mm -hmm. right? And it's fantastic. Everybody raves about their cookies. They really do enjoy them. So I'm, I'm hoping they go well on our site too. But in four weeks, I have to sell everything. If I don't sell everything in four weeks. We have to eat them. We have to eat them. <laughs> so, or give them away or whatnot. So that's something to consider too. Do the products have a good shelf life? And a lot of the food items don't have the greatest of shelf life. Let me try to go back here a couple times. A couple times. There we go. Um, let's see. An item that probably has a decent shelf life. The, the um, candy, club. candy club. A lot of the candies have really good shelf life. Sometimes they can be as far as two years out. Mm -hmm. So that's not nearly as big of a deal. We have ham and hard candies that are a couple yep. years out that are like cinnamon ones. Those are really like, good. Those are on hookedonpicking.com. I think their chocolate bars are like eight months, but that's still really good. Yep. When well, it comes we to usually that. sell the chocolate bars within very quickly the first month we get them. We don't make a ton of profit every time we sell a candy bar, but it is kind of a neat thing. And we've been noticing people put them with their order, and they just is something sure. nice. So, seven tips to buying wholesale and maximize the profit. Question number six to ask yourself is Do you know your desired profit margins? What do I mean by that? Let me go to a different one. Let's go pets. Why not? Everybody's got a pet, right? Uh, let's see. Let's go dog treat pets. Here's a dog treat in the shape of a bear. That is perfect. Okay, so uh, you're going to have to also check, you know, uh, when it expires and all that fun stuff on this too. Uh, but you, you look at this and you look at the profit margins, okay? A dollar forty is what they're saying it's going to cost you. That's your cost of goods. And I'm assuming you get free shipping, okay? Uh, at that dollar forty, if you didn't get free shipping, you'd have to add that to your cost of goods. So this dollar forty, a cookie treat or a peanut butter bear display crate, this particular treat is a dollar forty an item. Then they're saying at MSRP's, that is the manu uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price. That's what that stands for. They're saying you could sell this cookie for two dollars and thirty cents. So think about it. How much are you making per cookie, right? You're making 60, you're making 90 cents a cookie. Is it worth it for you to make 90 cents a cookie? How does that go? Uh, maybe where you're, where you're at, you'd say, oh, no, those cookies would sell for two ninety nine. Well, then that's, of course, an increase in your profits. Mm -hmm. You need to know, or the best that you possibly can, what is your desired profit margins? And I would say on this is have yourself a fallback position if you will. What do I mean by that? Let's say you buy these for $1.40. Okay, here's the cookies. You buy them for $1.40. You price them for their manufactured retail or suggested retail price at two thirty, dollars and uh, two of them sell and the rest are just sitting there and they're sitting there and they're sitting there and nobody wants these treats anymore. Okay, and it's not that they're bad treats. It's just for whatever reason they think they cost too much. Okay, so now what is your fallback price? Okay, you still want to make a profit. So let's say you go $1.99. Now all of a sudden, people are buying them like crazy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what you're looking for is what are some fallback positions? A lot of times when we do fire sales, those are our fallback positions. To be able to say, okay, they're moving okay, but we really would like to blow through the inventory because we just don't have the hugest of space. 
So mm -hmm. let's drop it to our fallback position and see if people would buy it at that. That's and why it's always it quite often. Yeah, it's always a good idea to always keep good records on yep. how much you actually paid for the item. And let's say you just started on Tundra and you're not going to get free shipping because you're not a pro seller. That's okay. You can still pay shipping, but you have to factor that into your price. So for instance, those treats for $1.40, let's say they don't offer free shipping. Let's say you do have to pay shipping, but now that adds an additional 30 cents onto each cookie. So now instead of $1.40, you're going to put in for your own records a dollar seventy and you know I can't drop below a dollar seventy otherwise I legitimately lose money. Now it does right. happen on some of our products we actually have lost money because oh, it sure. was a poor choice or uh, we bought a ton of fidget spinners one time yeah. and we lost, uh, Hatchimals when they were not popular and we did lose money um, but we gained some money back out of it um, and then we just made a better purchase the next time. Very good and if you will the seventh question is to make maximize your profit the seventh question is where will you sell this item if you go back to tundra there's all of these different categories right if you're someone that man you already have this nice little boutique set up in your hometown you could sell jewelry and accessories all day long you know you could uh then, then great you know i mean you you've got the perfect little spot you know that if you put these what is it um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I think, uh, little bracelets. And let's say they work great in your uh, little Christian uh, bookstore. You know you could sell those wonderfully, and you could probably sell them for the $24 price tag. Th then you're good to go on that. But if you're someone saying, you know what, where I'm at, jewelry just doesn't sell at all. You're looking for where are you going to sell it. That same bracelet might sell well on your online store. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where are you going to particular sell these items? And we know of people that buy wholesale, and where else do they, they sell it at? Uh, flea markets. Yep. They sell it in their, like we were talking about, boutiques or shop or retail space. That would just be good for large and small things. Yep. And then I would say Poshmark, Yep. eBay. I obviously sell on Shopify or hookedonpicking.com. Um, and so just about anywhere. Um, Macari. You know, all sorts of different places. Yep. Uh, but each individual item is going to be different based on where you want to sell it. You know, if you're in a touristy area, you can sell some of those little knickknacks and trinkets. Um, or online, you can sell those knickknacks and trinkets. But if you live in the middle of nowhere, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to sell that. But you might be able to sell furniture pieces, right. you know, because you're not near anything. I would say another thing to think about is the gift shop idea. If you are in a town that, I don't know, has a huge statue of the unicorn. Just go with me for a moment. <laughs> All right? I don't know of a town that's like that. But it has a huge statue of a unicorn. If you, and have, you have a, a little shop. First off, if you have a huge statue of a unicorn in your town, please comment here. Please comment in the yeah. comment section below. I know below. plenty of people that would go see you. Maybe you want to think about buying some plush unicorns. Okay? Um, here, let me do one more that's maybe a little bit more uh, believable. Well, if you go the up unicorn. to, there was a, a moose there. So if yeah, you, okay, perfect. If, you, if you're like in, was it North Dakota, South Dakota, Alaska? Yeah, you're, you know, you're uh, an Alaska. <laughs> I don't know. You're in Alaska. Look at this. You have a perfect little plush moose that you're buying for four dollars. They're suggesting it sells for ten dollars and forty nine cents. But in your area, you can sell it for fourteen ninety nine or might, nineteen ninety nine. Might go great on that. Oh, we saw moose in uh, Colorado when we were there. Uh, I think uh, elk or moose or something. Something. We saw something. Uh, let's see. I wonder if I could do. Hold on a second. I want to try something. I'm gonna try this. Okay. Uh, I'm doing this live, so I don't know. Octopus. Yeah. Let's see if I can find an octopus. Okay. Let's say you are that um, aquarium. Look, here's socks. These are socks. These are squid socks or octopus socks. Octopus socks. socks. Think about that. What are you going to sell those for if you're in the aquarium? Are you going to sell them for five forty nine? Nope. Twelve ninety nine all day long. Yep. Think about the last time you were in a gift shop. What What do these things go for? They went yep. for a lot more money that's where they're getting the majority of their things. And to be thinking through that, maybe your town has some little neat thing that makes it special. 
And if you have a shop, you're missing out if you're not thinking about somehow using that item uh, to theme a little section in your shop. So seven tips or questions to buying wholesale and maximizing profit. So you want to just kind of go over them? Sure. Uh, number one, are you willing to try it? Number two, do they offer shipping? Number three, are the items in season or out of season? Number four, have you considered where you will store the items? Number five, do the products have a good shelf life? Number six, do you know your desired profit margins? And where will you sell the item at? Awesome. So hopefully this has been really helpful. Go ahead and check out Tundra for getting items for your own reselling uh, store and platforms. And hopefully uh, you go ahead and take advantage of that 15% off on Tundra. So click the link down in the description below. It'll be right at the top of the description for the Tundra 15% off link. And then also don't forget we have the Hooked on Pickin. 15% off. Use the promo code video in the cart. So when you go to check out in the promo code space, you just type in video and you will also get 15% off our store because we want to definitely uh, show you all the things that we have on discount. We usually buy wholesale, but then price it really super reasonable. We're not we doing the high prices of a gift shop. We are doing no. the low prices of hookedonpicking.com. That's right. So thanks so much for joining us and hopefully you have learned a lot. And of course, remember in the end, Jesus wins. You guys are a true blessing in my life. Thank you so much for helping me put this content out there to everyone. If you'd like to join these great people, please consider supporting me through my Patreon page. Check the link below. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, just click on them here. And if you'd like to learn more about the reseller world, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks.